Let's give Pastor Zalalem the honor where honor is due. We need to give as he comes to share with us God's word. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Uh, thank you for your honor. Um, uh, it's good to see everyone here. Uh, really, when I see you guys, it's, it just gives us energy to to really go forward. Um, thank you very much for coming and listening the word of God and worshiping the Lord. There is nothing that is joyable and really most exciting thing than worshiping the Lord. Um, maybe you might not see this one. Um, one of the things which I realized when I was in um, a, a coma, the, the, the things which I realized is uh, I can't breathe, so I have got so much respect for air. And God is giving us this air. It's easy to breathe now. You don't pay for it. You never even consider of um, whether the air is there or not. But once the air is out, then you begin to give value for that. Let me tell you that every part of your body has got value. Look, there are times that you can't raise your hands. It's good to raise your hands and worship the Lord now. There are times that you can't speak anymore. For me to speak really is hard when I was in that coma. There is around 50, maybe 100 kilo of weight in my, my lung, and I couldn't able to breathe, leave alone to speak. Um, and you give value for, spe I mean for speech so that you can uh, talk to God. You can praise, you can be louder. I do know that when uh, your favorite team is really winning through the television or whatever media you're using, but you cheer up. You just say that, well, come on, go. It's good to say to the Lord, I mean, when he's just touching you, when God is really doing something in your heart, it's good to praise God. I mean, as long as you know what it requires to praise God, what does it require to praise God? Only breath. Those who have got breath in their lung, let them praise the Lord. It's good to praise the Lord. Amen? While you are really young, vibrant, very um, full of energy, it's good to praise the Lord. Amen? That's good. So today I'm going to share you, I, I really battled for this message. And, uh, I, and I decided, I said, let me go with my heart. It's been in my heart, so it's just... Uh, Really, so I just want to share you my heart. This kind of messages when I bring, I don't study them. I don't uh, just say that, okay, God, what can, I, uh, what can I just share them and study? So this is just part of me. The Lord is speaking to me, and I just meditate on it, and I just really, and I know that it, it has got a power. Uh, and the message, the title of the message is, uh, Lay your burden. Lay your burden before the Lord. And Matthew chapter 11 verse uh, 28 says that you are weak. Who, whoever is weak, whoever has got heavy burden in his shoulder or in his heart, in his soul. Whatever the burden you have, lay it before the Lord. Before you go out from this room today, I do believe in all my heart. With all respect, I ask you. Don't take your burden and go away from this room. Lay your burden before the Lord. Be free. He's happy to take the burden from you. He's happy to take the burden from me, from you, so that he can set us free. Amen? Is that all right? Good. If that's the case, then let's go and read uh, this scripture. And uh, if the scripture is out in... Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7 and verse 13, and then we go to Psalm 51. And it says this one, and I, I, I want, uh, who is going to, I, I think, are you? Can you read for me? Is that all right? Uh, Mike, uh, if Mike is given to are you? Or can I help you uh, until you, you get that? That's good. That's good. 
Are you slowly in our thin metanabi? I just want you to understand the word, okay? This is a very precious time. Pay attention. Uh, 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 yeah, if the, you have mobile phone to read the Bible, don't worry about it. It just comes here. So close your mobile phone, put it in your pocket for a while. So just give the whole attention to the Lord, okay? Is that all right? <coughs> okay. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you as king over Israel, and I spared you from the hand of Saul. Yeah, this is verse 7, and this is verse 13. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has allowed your sin to pass. Without further punishment, you shall not die. Okay. Um, let me just... Uh, try to summarize the story. You know the story, chapter uh, 11 of 2 Samuel. David, you know the king of Israel, not only the king of Israel, he is the standard. He is the model of the, the nation. Like Christ is our model, and the Lord is saying that all of us, we need to resemble Christ. The same way in the Old Testament, the, the model, the bar, is David. So David is not a simple man. Don't take him like a single person and then every generation is killed by David. Okay? That is him. And not only in Israel, but the surrounding nations also, his influence is so big. Every nation and the Davidic kingdom is so big kingdom. Israel flourished through David because God was with him. That's the secret of him. So David now, he made this very, very silly scene. Very horrible sin. Sometimes this is what happened. I will tell you honestly what happens. I mean, listen to me closely. Because David by this time, something is happening in his life. Something is wrong. Because the scripture is saying that when the time has come, kings to go for war. Because in that time, this is the scenario. Kings, they lead the army. Okay, David always leads the army to fight, and they knew. Everyone knows that if David was leading the army, they will win. Because the Lord was with David, and the Lord is fighting for him. This time, he laid back, he stayed back, and he said, Joab, he's the army chief, like general or something like that. And he's the one leading the army. Anyway, what happened is, David was not only sitting at home, but he was really unsettled. It's unusual for David to walk on the palace. He was resting, but he was walking on the palace upstairs. I don't know what, I, I think they have got upstairs by that time also. They are just walking around and they see the country because they are, uh, they are having this... Um, their uh, palaces in the mountain, just a hill kind of thing, so they can see the city. Now when he watched, he saw a woman washing, taking a bath. If, you, if you're not aware of that, how comes a woman take a bath in the middle of nowhere? I mean, it's just in the river. How can she be naked? Look, in our country, if you go now, they do the same. In our country, not in uh, the cities, but just in, in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, you can go there. You can see people washing. They're taking their baths in the river. Even now, yes. You can prove it. Or maybe if you Google, Google, and then you can see it. <laughs> Don't be surprised. You just stare at me. Is that true or not? It's true. Okay? Not only in Ethiopia, other countries, other African countries, Asian countries. I don't know about Australia. But I, I suspect maybe some other times maybe they did this and they passed it. But anyway, the woman is washing. There's nothing to, wrong with the woman. She's washing. She's taking bath. But he looked at her and she was beautiful. The Bible says she's so beautiful. And then he said that, who is this woman? And the king of Israel. And then he called. He just sent someone to bring her. And the king calls you, and she was terrified, and she was really, oh, the king, yeah, he needs you. Oh, just she. 
She came to the palace and she said, I need to sleep with you. David is so naughty by this time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just want to make it relatable to you. There are times you do, s you and me are doing these silly mistakes. Very naughty mistakes. Our eyes are blinded. David was saying no to many things before. But this time, he feel weak. He feel very weak. His perception, his understanding is, is taken. His fear of God is taken. Something is wrong with David. When we are going in downwards, we don't see it. We see it when we do some very nasty things. We might be doing the same as David did. We might be sleeping with someone who does not belongs to us. Or we might be doing some other things. But this time, look, this king did this one. And the story is so sad a story. And that the, what happened is the girl gets pregnant. That is uh, that's that's another thing and then he wants to add the, he wants to hide that pregnancy so that he called the husband he's called Uriah 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 yeah he called him from the battle he wants him to sleep with his uh, wife so that he wants to cheat him like oh the child is belongs to him because he slept with her that's the plan but the plan didn't work the guy said that I don't want to sleep with my wife because this is a season to fight, not to sleep with, the war, with my wife. He was, you see God protecting this innocent man? You see, one sin leads to another. When we flip that thing and then see those pornographic things, and that leads to another one. That leads, and there is more. There's more. Because we trigger something inside of us. And goes on. He goes on. David not only calling him, making him to sleep, then he just get another plan. Make him drunk and then take him home. Let him sleep with his wife. It doesn't work that way. Also, the man says that I don't want to even go home. He slept even in the outside the palace. He slept in the open air. He wants to go to war. Then David by his own hand he wrote a letter to Joab the commander put him in the fiery battle in front so that let him be killed look the king does this don't think that everyone is doing everything every time perfect there are naughty things we do sometimes you make yourself say that wow is that me doing this Big thing. You say you said you say to yourself, Am I really deserving to live? Is that what you say these things? I say these things. All of us. All of us. King David goes down to the bottom. And he sent the guy with his days later. He doesn't know the letter. It's closed. And he took it. He gave it to the commander. And the commander put him in the front. And he was killed. The news came. And Beth Bathsheba, she cried about her husband. After that, what happened is David, he brought her. Then Nathan came and he said this. He confronted him. When he confronted him, he told him a story. Okay, I don't want to go there. You read it. The chapter 12 is about that. When he confront him, what I just touched me is this. I saw it in a very few peoples in my life. In my walk with the Lord, I've seen this kind of type of um, quality in very few people. I've been with the Lord now the last 31 years. Most of you are not uh, even 31 here. Maybe Pastor Yeo is. 
But let me tell you one thing. This is what God wants. He said, this word. David said to Nathan, the prophet, I have sinned. That's all what God wants. I have sinned. Not to cover it up. Not to make it like beautiful. I've seen people. I made it myself. I make it like beautiful. Oh, I mean this way. Try to tell. To, I, I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to do this. I didn't mean uh, we justify things. We do. We paint it. It doesn't work. This is work. This, this is the thing that works. I have sinned. I have sinned before the Lord. He never said that before Uriah or Bathsheba, he never said that. But he said before the Lord. Why? There is a secret behind it. He knew. He knew because who said don't kill? God or Uriah? God. Who said don't commit adultery? God. So when we commit a sin, when we commit wrong things, it's not only the people we, we, we just uh, made, I mean, sin against them. But it's God against them. But David, that time, he wrote this psalm. This psalm heals every one of us every time. I believe in all my heart. This psalm, I will share you, I'm not going to share you the whole psalm. It's deep, it's, 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 I can't even stay the whole day and explain all the verses. But I just want to focus on three verses. In Psalm 51. If you can take Psalm 51, then we can share these words together. And I tell you, uh, let's say, let's hear what God says and then let's respond, each one of us. Don't go out with the burden you carry on today. Don't go out with the weaknesses you have and say that. And God is telling me this one thing in my heart. He said to me, son, love repentance. If you don't love repentance, you don't make it. Love repentance. Every time, love repentance. Look, let me explain this one because it might help someone here. Not repentance only to come to the Lord, okay? Repentance needs, repentance means changing your mind, the way you think. If, let's say, I'm treating Alam Sahai in a harsh way, God is saying, you are not right, I need to what? Repent and then turn and treat her properly. Okay, in the ministry, I treat someone really harshly, okay? And then God is saying that this is not the way I want you to treat someone. And I repent and I turn. So repentance, we need it every time. If we want our life to be transformed, we need a repentance. True repentance. Saying that I have sinned. Don't give excuse. Don't say that someone pushed me and... David has got a reason. Maybe one of these wives annoyed him. Maybe the two of them. They ha he has got four of them. But he annoyed them and uh, maybe his son is abusing him or maybe something happened to him. I don't know what happened, but something happened to him. But he never, he never gave that excuse. He said, I have sinned. If you say, I have sinned and take full responsibility, let me tell you, no one loves it, but the Lord loves it. He will set you free. Today, you'll be free and you'll go. The freedom God gives. Okay, let's go. I, you can read slowly though. And David, he wrote this by that time. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to what? Loving. You see, how God loves, he understood that already. So, don't treat me as as I did, as I do this very horrible sin, but as your loving kindness. Okay. 
according to the greatness of your compassion, uh -huh. blot out my transgressions. Uh -huh. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Yeah, keep on going. For I am conscious of my transgressions, and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. Now stop here, and I want you to remember this word. What does that say? Acknowledge. You need to acknowledge it. You and me, we need to acknowledge. We need to say that. I acknowledge my sin. If we commit something, let's say we hurt someone or we are doing something very funny, like horrible, like David, we say that, yes, God, I did it. <laughs> Don't say that. Someone makes me to do it. Say, I did it. I will take ownership. Acknowledge. When we acknowledge something, something shifted in us. We don't blame someone. We blame ourselves. We don't blame someone. So that's what he said. I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. He took ownership. And then he goes on. Keep on going. Against you, you only have I sinned. Look what he said. Against you, God. When we do commit sin, we commit before the Lord. Don't forget this one. Oh, it's a simple sin. It's just, uh, I'm cheating someone. You're cheating someone? Yes. God said, do not cheat. Uh, uh, just a small thing I steal. Uh, but, uh, see, I think uh, stealing is these days uh, it's a fashion <laughs> of a young people. Let me tell you that it's a sin. It's a serious sin. It starts with small. I've seen it. And it grows and it grows. Look, people who are stealing bank robbery and all these big things, it happens. It starts very small. I told you already, sin grows. It keeps on going very fast. Very fast. Unless we say, yes, I have sinned. Okay. And done that which is evil in your sight, so that you, ha so that you are justified when you speak um, and, f and faultness is in your judgment. Mm -hmm. I, was brought of, um, I was brought forth in wickedness, in sin, my mother conceived me. You see, this is where uh, see, uh, I, I, I'm really amazed about David. That problem took him where the source of the sin is. All of us, we conceived with sin and wickedness in our mother's womb. Means we take that sin from Adam. That's what he mean. He mean that this thing... I was not aware of it. I was prideful. I, even I was just saying that, no, it will not touch me. But it's there. I need to be very careful. But it's there. Then he acknowledged this one and he moved on. He said, continue. In, sorry. Behold, you desire truth in, innermost, in the innermost being and in the hidden part of my heart. <laughs> you will make me no wisdom. This is what I, I am amazed about this one. I will focus on verse 7, but here I just want to say something. When I was in that uh, coma, one thing I just noticed is you can't hide things. There's nothing in the spirit realm is hiding. You see things the way they are. Uh, the actual thing is there. You can read it. You can see it. The peoples, uh, I mean, the, the, the spirits who are talking, I can see them, what they are talking, what they are thinking. I, they see me the same thing. There is no hidden thing. So I'm telling you that he said that in the innermost being, there is this desire of being true. So you know it. I know it when I hurt someone. When I do commit sin, you know it, I know it. But we hide it. We just make up. We just pretend. Smiley face and we just say that, ah, it's okay, it's okay, I can handle it. You can't handle it. 
Don't cheat yourself. Don't, you can't handle it. Don't do that. Yeah, we say that how many times we can handle it and then it just comes out of us. Say to, I can't handle it, Lord. But I acknowledge it. And then I, I will be true into my innermost truth. So keep on going. Chapter, verse 7. Purify me with his soap. And, I'll, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. Okay. This is what I, I have in my heart. Listen to me these three verses properly. I, I just want you to understand this. Hisop is a kind of... Uh, you know, uh, I, I wish you, you, you are exposed with this kind of ruler kind of, I mean, upcountry living. A life, not in the city, in their, uh, an up, there, there is a, a plant called hyssop, okay? There is also, in, a, in, a, in our country, they wash clothes with it, okay? It will clean the clothes. It's just, they use it as a, a soap. And he's saying that, wash me with that. And you will make me clean. I will be clean. But here in the New Testament, we have the blood of Jesus, even bigger and better than the hyssop that can cleanse us from sin and all unrighteousness. Say all unrighteousness. All sin and unrighteousness. The Lord promised us, don't take your guilt. The reason why I share you, I've been honest with you, I prayed and I said, the Lord brought this thing. There is guilt in the house and I want to take it. Today, please, don't walk away with guilt. God wants to clean it up. Clean us. So that, that's the thing I want to share you. Let's, let's go. Um, verse uh, 8, yep. Make me hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Uh -huh. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Mm -hmm. Go. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right and a steadfast spirit within me. Yes. Pause here. And this is the beautiful thing. Clean heart. Create in me. This is the thing that really I pray before the Lord. David, by this time, his heart is a corrupted heart, distorted heart, a heart full of many other corruption. So he said, please, God, create in me a clean heart. Please, let's pray today this prayer. Let's mean it from our heart clean heart. Give me a clean heart. Let me tell you one thing. The freedom you have is when you have that clean heart. When you have that clean heart, let me tell you, worshiping the Lord, communicating with anyone, really living out there is so easy. So light, so easy. It's a beautiful thing. Please, let's have the clean heart. And David says, take out this heart. Take, change it. He said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. And the second one is, Pastor Yoyo was saying that, uh, renew a right and steadfast spirit. What does that steadfast mean? Uh, I think Melat was saying, stand firm. Steadfast means not wavering. David is wobbly now by this time. He can't stand. Is there anyone similar to that? It's very hard for me to stand in the Lord. I say something, I do something else. Really hard. My heart is wobbly. He said that. Renew a right and a steadfast spirit. And I'm asking you today, don't go out. 
God wants to do the, this kind of things in your heart today. I encourage you, if you have any issue, even within anyone here, you have any issue against someone, please drop it today. Solve it today. Solve it today. Why? For God to create that clean heart and then renew a right and a steadfast spirit. That spirit called heart in other translation. God will give you that steadfastness and the right spirit. And verse 12 says this. Verse 11 and 12 and I'll finish with that. Do not, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. How many of you are really... Uh, by this time, David is the presence of God he used to experience in his life is not, a, is not there anymore. You know, for Christians, for all of us here, for us, the punishment is... The, 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 the bad side of sin is taking away the presence. The presence of God is not there anymore. It doesn't fellowship with that. Unless we repent and we restore that relationship with God, the presence of God, we say that the presence of God come and we do this. No, it doesn't come. It comes when we repent. And this week, I, s I sit with... Uh, after three years, I, I met with one uh, person and then we uh, shared things together. And there was a lot of repentance. There was a lot of tears between us. And it's beautiful. It just sets you free. It sets you free. Let me tell you, the presence of God, you see, you sense it. God is waiting that. God is saying that I will bring my presence upon you. And let me tell you that the plan God has for you is so bigger than what you think. So the presence of God by this time is taken from. Why? Because God has to aware us. When we commit something which is ungodly and things will not go the same way. The presence is drifted. We need to be aware. God bring the presence. Without the presence of God, let me tell you that Christianity is boring. The boring thing to do is Christianity. To walk with the Lord, to come to church is a boring thing. Boring. The most boring thing to do is without the presence of God to come to church. That's why many of you are really struggling. Struggling to come to church, even to come to church. It's boring. Why the presence? It's about the presence. I've been honest. Why? I heard, I heard something. I heard something. That's why I'm aware now. I'm not telling you by guess. I want you to be free when you go out from this room today. So the presence is coming to your life. It's joyful. With the presence of God, you can, good, you can do anything. Any tough thing, any challenging thing comes, you do it. Why? The presence is there. God is there with you. It's amazing how God works. Okay, verse, after that, verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. And this is, this is the thing which I really struggle now. With my own life, I'm telling you. Willing spirit. There is, you see, when you are, when you are battling inside, this is a rebellious spirit inside of you. It's just, tug, you, you can sense it. Not a willing to God, to say yes to God. It's just a battle. It's a rebellion. You know that. Ah, ah. You say something and you say that. Ah, this Holy Spirit. He's just pointing out. He just shows you something. And then he exposes that unwillingness. That rebelliousness. That he exposes it. 
Let's submit today. Submit. Submission is the beautiful thing. Unless we submit. Look, he's, he has got an unwilling spirit. He said that. Give me a willing spirit. Please restore. Restore God. I just want to say something to you. I want to do something. But there is a rebelliousness inside of me. So change it. What an honest man. Honest man. And look how God is doing. By doing this, look what happens after this. Just read it. Are you? I will not explain it, but it will explain by itself. Then I will teach transgresses your ways and sinners shall be converted to and return to you rescue me from blood guiltness O god the god of my salvation then my tongue will sing joyful of your righteousness and your justice O lord open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise for you do not delight in sacrifice, or else I would give it. You're not pleased with burnt offering. My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, and thoroughly penitent. Such, O oh God, you will not despise. By your favor, do good to Zion. May, your, may you rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Mm. Then will you delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, in burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then young bulls will be offered on your altar. It's amazing how God is, when he's restoring this man, he said that I will return those who are sinning against you. Restore in me the joy of salvation. If we are not excited about our salvation, let me tell you that we are some, somewhere else. We need to repent. We need to come back. If we are not excited about the things of God, the kingdom, advancing the kingdom, let me tell you, if that is not there in our heart, is we need to repent. Something took it. Don't take it lightly. I've been, I've been honest with you. Anything that is really holding you today, you have to let go. The burden has to be taken. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you. Let me tell you one very important thing and then I stop here. Chapter 6, it's relating with this one, what David is saying. Chapter 6 of Romans, he said this. You used to submit to the teaching when you were exercising sin, we submit to another teaching. Okay? That teaching, whether it is through social media, flicking the phone, or whatever we do, or with friends, with other things, we exercise that teaching. The teaching comes through friends, whatever way, okay? It, it doesn't have to be a church sermon like this. Someone is teaching you about how to sin. Okay? You can, you can learn, we can learn it anywhere. And the Bible is saying, as long as you submit into that teaching, you were rebellious and against God. Now, you are willingly make a decision and you come out of that teaching and you submit to the teaching of God. When you submit the teaching of God, you are free from the other one. Now you are submitting God. When you submit to God, look how beautiful it is. He said that freedom will come to your life. That presence will come to your life. That joy will come to your life. That peace will come to your life. That contentment and rest is coming to your life. I've been honest with you. The Holy Spirit is ready to do that. It's only requiring us one thing. God, I've sinned it. I've sinned like David. I don't blame anyone. I don't blame my wife. I don't blame my kids. I don't blame my friends. I don't blame this one. I don't blame that one. Because 
They teach us here in this country, especially, we blame. We blame the, the psychiatrist and others and all this. And they told us, oh, it's because of your father, your mother. You'd, oh, we can't go there. We can't fix the past. That's it. Let me tell you, we need to acknowledge it. Yes, I have sinned God. Heal me. Here I am. God. Doesn't matter whoever is doing that. But let's open up. I'm not saying that the psychiatrists are doing a bad job. But taking us back into old things and then that fixes the problem, I don't think. What I'm saying to you is, let's just really be honest and open up. And say, God, I'm here. I did it, it's me. I take responsibility. I, I acknowledge it. And then, let me be honest with you, God will take it. Wash it away. Not with his hope, with the blood of Jesus. It's powerful. It's powerful. The freedom, we need it. Don't risk it. It's through Christ that freedom comes to you. Don't risk it. Don't give it to anyone. So, stand up in your feet, and we close with this prayer.